Hello everybody, hi, this is Krina again and hope everyone is having a great day wherever you are, right? As we are anyway on Christmas Eve, so hope you're having a great day and doing just fine and in great festive mood, yeah? And so today, um, we continue to see another green day, so that's very good, right? Let's just look at it, right? Um, coin market cap, right? The market cap, overall market cap for cryptocurrencies is now at 145 billion, which is really nice because actually, you know, just about um, more than one week ago on December 15th was when it's lowest at 100 billion. Now, we you know, we have gone up by um, 45%, which is uh, great, right? And of course, the top coins are... Um, the biggest winner is no doubt XRP is 20% up right um, among the top 10 coins yeah um, yeah Bitcoin is also doing well above 4,000 level so it's already tested 4,200 level so the next one probably is 4,400 right I think before if we can hit 4,400 then you know we will be um, hopefully got looking at the 5,000 to 6,000 level yeah so that will be very great news as well yes um, okay so it is confirmed that Binance is adding XRP pairing for both coins, right? TRX, Trox, Tron, and XZC coin, you know, which is um, it has been just, you know, officially announced by Binance via a tweet. And I'm also checking on their website, right? This is official news. Um, so this is great news, right? It's just, just yesterday that, you know, we have seen basically there was a tweet reply by the uh, Binance CEO Zhang Pingzhao that says, right, uh, be careful what you wish for, right? And actually, in response to a XRP supporter who said that, you know, you, um, uh, Binance will make a lot of people very happy if they were to list XRP as a trading pair on their platform. And then, you know, the CEO replied by saying that, uh, yes, you know, be careful what you wish for. And today, like just one day later, we have got official news that XRP is added as a, you know, trading pair. So it's just a matter of time before they will add more coins, right? But this is a uh, very good news for XRP. Um, so next is, is a, another very good news as well for XRP is basically they now have also been launched on a decentralized exchange crypto bridge, yeah? And a decentralized exchange is basically very good because they offer a good alternative, you know, to centralized exchanges, right? They basically will hold your funds and if, well, so, uh, although many of the top exchanges have now really, you know, boosted and beefed up their infrastructure to ensure security, but, right, I mean, there is still, I mean, there is still that chance, right, of hacking, yeah, because it's centralized, all the money is in that one place, right, so it's very, um, it is still susceptible, right, although the risk is low for, you know, major exchanges, but, right, no doubt, so the decentralized exchange, exchanges will be a good trend, and especially, I think, next year, you will see more and more of that. Binance also has announced, right, before that they will look at launching a decentralized exchange next year, so all this will become more more and more alternatives, right? And basically making it easier for you know, normal investors to actually want to trade, especially people who are very concerned about security, then the decentralized exchange will be a really good um, alternative. Um, however, we do have some negative news, right? Although um, at least the title seems to be negative, right? So this news, the title says the launch of BACT might be postponed due to regulatory delays and current US government shutdown. So what happened was um, because of the... Um, holidays right long extended holidays um it is expected that you know government are basically not working over so long and uh also because they are focusing on the u.s mexico border war funding issues so you know they they are expecting or the you know the industry is basically expecting some delays right there's no official news basically there's no official announcements as well from backs directly but there are some um, speculation or rumors in the market that basically we might see some delay although there's a um, you know it might be just a delay of a few days is what the, the the speculation has been going on but no one really knows right but then i i would say that basically the fundamental doesn't change right i mean backed is still going to be launched it's just a matter of time right but regardless it will once it's launched it will be then very easy for you know institutions to buy into cryptocurrencies right and also with partners like microsoft and starbucks then it should make the cryptocurrency adoption right quickly becoming more mainstream yeah um 
Next news again, right? Just by looking at the title, it's super negative. Um, bye bye Bitcoin. Wall Street quietly shelves its cryptocurrency plans, right? Just as um, the crypto, um, you know, market is kind of like slowly looking to come out of its winter, right? Then you have news like this, right? Um, so let's let's read it because I think it is important to read this one, yeah. Um, Limbo, that's where to find Wall Street when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Squeamish from the start about pursuing profits in one of the darker corners of finance, established firms this year slowed their already halting efforts to make a business out of Bitcoin mania. While none has thrown in the tower and some continue to develop a trading infrastructure, most flinched as the value of virtual coins collapsed. Now back to now I want to come out of the article and just talk a bit of my opinion. Now you see the title says bye bye Bitcoin, right? It is very negative. It clearly says right they are like you know abandoning Bitcoin altogether. But actually, if you read even the second paragraph, if you people who read right, not everyone who reads that's the problem, right? It says while none of them has thrown in the tower, so no official news, right? None at all from the major banks, Wall Street banks that says they are not doing. Bitcoin or crypto projects anymore. There's not even announcements to say that they are delaying any plans, right? But you have articles like this that says bye bye Bitcoin. And then also in the article, they have the chick to say, well, none has thrown in the tower, right? Um, some continue to develop infrastructure still, but most flinched, right? It's just more like a reaction, right? Um, yeah, it's so strange, right? So it's like actions definitely speak louder than words, right? So it's really strange. Okay, back to reading the article. Take Goldman Sachs Group, which sought to position itself as the cutting edge of digital assets that skeptics see mainly as the domain of day traders and anarchists. Progress has been so slow to be barely noticeable, according to people familiar with this crypto business. Many in the industry now say that it was quixotic to have expected last year's frenzy to translate into a Wall Street crypto offering. Quote, the market had unrealistic expectations that Goldman or any of its peers could suddenly start a Bitcoin trading business. Um, said Daniel H. Galancy, CEO of New York-based Solid X Partners, which hopes to launch a Bitcoin ETF in the US. That was top of the market hype thinking. Goldman remains a focal point for expectations of an establishment embrace of crypto. The firm was among the first on Wall Street to clear Bitcoin futures, and people familiar with the matter said last year was preparing a trading desk. The bank even provided its bankers to the the New York Times for an interview on its plans. After considering a custody service for crypto funds, the firm invested in custodian BitGo Holdings. It's also offering derivatives on Bitcoin called non-deliverable non forwards. The bank has yet to offer crypto trading of crypto and has gained little traction for its NDF product. Having signing up just 20 clients, according to the family of Matter, Justin Schmidt, who was hired to head his digital assets, was said in an industry conference last month that regulators are limiting what he can do. Still, Goldman plans to add a digital asset specialist to its prime brokerage division. Yeah, With regulators offering little clear guidance on how they will classify the broad universe of tokens as commodities, securities, or something else, banks and investment firms are trading cautiously. Criminal and regulatory probes aren't helping either. Morgan Stanley, which hired Andrew Peel as its head of digital assets early last year, has been technically prepared to offer swaps tracking Bitcoin futures since late last September, yet thus far has not traded a single contract. A person with the knowledge of the business said in September the contracts will be launched once there's proven institutional client demand. Meanwhile, Citigroup has not traded any of the products it's designed for cryptocurrencies within existing regulatory structures. The so-called digital asset receipts enable trading by proxy without a direct ownership of the underlying coins. In London, Barclays, which has sounded out client interest on a cryptocurrency trading desk, is almost back to square one. Earlier in the year, the British bank appointed two former oil traders, Chris Tyrell and Matthew Job Duval, to explore business. Tyrell, who led the digital assets project, left in September, while Job Duval followed two months later. Barclays currently has no plans for a crypto trading desk, according to a spokesman. Officials from of uh, Citigroup and Morgan Stanley declined to comment on their cryptocurrency business for its part. Goldman's primary focus is thoughtfully and safely serving our clients' needs. Even after staggering self and digital assets, 2018, a year after Bitcoin came in touching distance 20,000, it now trades at around 4,000. Crypto proceeds, science institutions are getting ready to jump back in if they need to. 
Quote, the more important story is that all the infrastructure that's being built now to enable institutional trading. According to Ben Sapley, a former Credit Suisse Group trader who is now head of brokerage at crypto boutique NKB Group. International, Intercontinental Exchange, ICE, owner of New York Stock Exchange, said in August it had created a suite of services to enable customers and institutions to buy, sell, store, and spend digital assets. Meanwhile, Fidelity Investments said in October is preparing a new business to manage digital assets for hedge funds, family offices, and trading firms. Another encouraging sign for the bulls came the same month in the form of Yale University's investment in a crypto fund. Even after the plunge that it raised 700 billion from value of crypto assets, believers are sticking to their script. Quote, as if, as if, it appears as if progress is coming to a halt, yet nothing can be further from the truth, said Eugene Ng, a former Deutsche Bank trader who has set up a crypto hedge fund, Circuit Capital. The bear market, the bear market is going to allow many of these institutions to build the proper foundations without rushing to build out infrastructure, without adequate testing for fear of missing out on a gold rush. Finish the article. Now, I just want to quickly point out a few points here, right? So again, I want to say the title of the news is really, really meant to scare people off, right? And people will not read really so patiently to the end of the article, right? Which I've read quickly. But basically, the end of the article says, right? And if you read through the whole thing, it really means that no official news from the banks or the Wall Street firms have not come out officially said that they are sh they are stopping abandoning plans on crypto. They have only said, right, Goldman Sachs have the one of the top player and a top executive have only said that regulations is limiting what he can do. But right at the same time, we know that yes, regulations is limiting now what they can do. But already there are two congressmen that you know already come up to say that they want to have regulations that are very crypto friendly, just like rules like the internet to actually foster innovation, right? That's already we know that already. And also, at the end of the article, we are saying basically, right, they are continue to, you know, put their money behind, right? Like Goldman Sachs have, you know, invested in um, BitGo, which is this is very recent news, it's in October 2018 news as well. And, you know, we do have, we have seen, right, a lot of the major firms like NASDAQ, TD Ameritrade and Fidelity invested in the new crypto exchange, ArisX. All these are basically people putting real money behind, right? And this is also very recent, October and December 2018. And this is amidst the whole year of uh, crypto winter that we have seen. So what does it mean, right? So again, I would say, really, right, don't just listen to the rumors, right? Really see where the money is going, right? And see what the, you know, the top banks are actually doing, right? I mean, also, right, I mean, just to remind you, there's a lot of um, um, the Galaxy Digital, right, which basically they already have more than 1% of a cryptocurrency of Bitcoin, sorry, more than 1% of Bitcoin in their holdings. As they said that basically, right, month on month in 2018, despite all these prices being so low and bearish, they are, you know, constantly accumulating Bitcoin into their funds. And who are buying their funds, basically, is the institutions and rich people, super rich people, yeah? So, and not only that, Galaxy Digital is headed, right, by a former partner of Goldman Sachs, Mike Novogratz. So he definitely, right, he definitely know a lot of people in Goldman Sachs as well. And people who are connected definitely know which, what each other are doing and planning. Why are they still continue to accumulate Bitcoin? despite all these prices down, right? You just have to think of all these things, right? Yeah, next. China now ranks 34 crypto projects. Now, as we all know, China has actually officially come out and say, right, ICO is banned, you know, crypto is banned, but they, you know, their China Center for Information and Industry Development has basically, you know, they have um, crypto ranking, you know, that constantly, and they're constantly updated as well, you know, and, that's the interesting thing about China, right? The, the, I just want to, I'm not going to read through it, but basically they rank EOS as number one. That's the key highlights. And the other thing is Bitcoin as number 18, right? But regardless, it is interesting why a country that banned a cryptocurrency have an index that look at specifically ranking the projects, right? So my take and my personal opinion only, right? Um, that they are actually, you know, behind all this screen, all this official news, that they are actually supporting cryptocurrency, right? And they basically want to hedge against, right, all these US dollars that are holding in their reserves, yeah? Should US dollars fail, then, um, you know, cryptocurrency 
will be one of their big H, right? And um, the other thing is also this, right? Why it supports my hypothesis is also that um, a lot of the mining firms continue to operate out of China still, right? And who supply electricity to them, right? So that's all this, just, just the actions of um, governments, right? Really tell you what's happening. That's really my take, yeah? Um, next up, I thought that this is a very interesting news, right? Uh, the title is the Hong Kong Wits Kid who wants to revolutionize the way we use cryptocurrency. So this is uh, by no means, of course, um, is not an uh, endorsement and I do not, do not receive money definitely from you know this Wits Kid to promote his new cryptocurrency. But this is really a new innovation, right, by a very, very smart individual that, you know, um, coming up with a new token, new coin, right, that basically make use of our free computing power in our smartphones to actually um, earn free money. Basically, when we are not using this smartphone, when we sleep, right, that's six, seven, eight hours, when we're resting, they, you, we can actually, um, you know, um, sell all this computing power and basically then to get dollars. And basically, he has estimated, right, that, uh, people can get like one to three dollars for just about six to eight hours of, uh, you know, that computing power rents out. So it would be really good if that's true, right? Um, for people in, you know, the really poor parts of the world, right, that has smartphones and now they can get some extra money as well. So this can be really, really good for those people who are really poor, right? Um, but they have a smartphone and that's how I see it, right? Um, just want to quickly go through it. Uh, Kenta Iwasaki wants to revolutionize cryptocurrency. He is just a 20 year old grad, right? Who turned out offers from Stanford U and um, California Institute of Technology in the US for an owner degree course in um, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Yeah. And the thing is this this young, you know, very smart, talented kid has raised 49 million US dollars to fund a cryptocurrency driven marketplace that aims to change the industry floundering under sinking coin values. Yeah. So what does he do? Um, so a bit of his background. So the marketplace is named Perlin. It's based on a blockchain created by Iwasaki himself, right? It's a self-taught programmer who has an eight-year-old already making thousands of US dollars a month from online software he developed. Um, at four years old, right, he already learned programming through a constant process of trial and error. His school grades suffered as he ran businesses while also working as a graphic designer and web developer in high school. But he decided to pursue a computer science and engineering degree with a scholarship at Lee Kashin Foundation. So the other thing is this, very, very smart people. So this is out of the news. Very, very smart people who are really, right, the young generation, the really, really smart individuals are actually working in cryptocurrency. That ought to tell you, right, also the future and the long-term potential of this space. Yeah, back to the news. Um, so now Iwasaki is set to launch Perlin, which provides a new model for how cryptocurrency is valued and how companies can source cloud computing power. It could also help people make money off their smartphones, enabling users to sell their phones' computing units temporarily every single night to an enterprise or a startup. Iwasaki and his international team of entrepreneurs and engineers hope to have 50,000 smartphones connected to their network by the end of 2019, providing computing power to companies in exchange for PERL, P -E -R -L, which is their uh, cryptocurrency. That currency, cryptocurrency also looks to address a pressing problem in the industry because its value was linked to the price of computing power sold on the network. The coin was insulated from the speculative purchases and pump and dump schemes that have destabilized cryptocurrencies in the past year. Yeah. So um, even if all of a sudden people stop trading, stop using cryptocurrencies, or stop using the exchange to buy and sell, it will still have a fixed value. It wouldn't just die off as a currency. Um, what is interesting is that right, there's already a uni Indonesia-based telco that already have signed up as a partner, you know, for in, on Perlin, yeah. And uh, let me see. It was okay. It's part of the use of this technology as a social enterprise with the potential to provide smartphones users in developing countries with free internet through their cellular providers or even in their loftier goals, a yeah, universal basic income paid directly to phone owners. Users with a 2000, 2007 model smartphones could make US dollar, $1 to $3 in a six-hour period, selling out just their computing power, he said. A telecommunication carrier in Indonesia had already signed on as a partner, even before the launch of it, just after the um, 
funding rounds. I don't know though, it is not reported who are the funders behind. But I won't be surprised, right? It's basically some um either some China China companies based in Hong Kong, you know, some venture capitalists based in US, right? That I wouldn't be surprised. But basically, this is again, you know, just another innovation in coming into this space, right? And um featuring very smart millennials, yeah. And um yeah, basically again trying to really revolutionize how the um, the whole world works, right? And giving um, money and empowering the, you know, people who are really, really poor in developing countries, yeah? So, um, next news is interesting uh, because Coin360, which is a platform, they basically have introduced some enhancements to their website. Coin360 is basically a platform, right, that offers a very... Uh, easy view of how coins are actually doing. Let's just take a look at it. This is the coin360.com and this is a view of, you know, so you can have a quick glance overview, right? Of uh, If you're not looking at the screen, now it's a really good time to look at the screen, right? So you can quickly see, is it a sea of red or is it a sea of green? So that quickly can tell you what is the trend, what is the sentiment now in cryptocurrency at any moment. It refreshes, you know, constantly. And you can also see what is the... Um, biggest coin right in terms of market cap and you can also see what's the trading volume and you know percentage increases and so on now what they have done is that they have you know just re they have just uh, enhanced this website by you know having a view of the um, crypto exchanges and this is very good because I think as Basically, I would see it's a signal to prepare, right? Uh, more users coming into this space. So this will be a very easy way for people to analyze which tr um, crypto exchange they should go with, right? Because um, sign of trading volumes is, of course, right? How much people trust this exchange, right? And what is their user experience be and all that, right? And their track record. So definitely, it is a good way also to quickly filter out who are the top ones. You can quickly see the ranks, right, of all the exchanges and also they have um, something called watch list right you can actually then set your own watch list of coins you want to monitor on a track yeah um, although all these are in beta mode um, that means early testing so but still it is very interesting I thought and uh, you know they also have a theme for Christmas yeah so yeah um, next up is this is a uh, speculation news, right? But basically, there are um, rumors that floating around that says, right, that's linking Facebook developing coins, their own stable coins, right, on uh, Ethereum Silicon Network. Yeah. Um, this basically is from a Twitter user, Oliver Bell, right, who basically linked this. Why? Because he sees that uh, Evan Cheng, who is a Zilliqa advisor and head of blockchain at FB, yeah, Mindshare Partnership. Um, Facebook is a partner of Mindshare, which is their um, similar marketing company. So they use a similar marketing company. Ex-Facebook head of blockchain quits Coinbase to avoid conflict of interest. Zilliqa gets listed on Coinbase, yeah. So the thing is, again, I guess if this rumor is true, then it's basically be very good for Zilliqa, okay. Next, US gamers now can now win crypto playing Fortnite with Unikin. So what this is, is basically is a um, gaming platform that allow right, gamers to earn fiat or cryptocurrency by betting them on themselves in a normal matchmaking gameplay. Okay, yeah, next news. Reports claim investors lost homes as Bitcoin crashed. Isn't stock market the same? So let me just quickly um, read uh, just a bit of it, right, That what that matters. Sky News, a British TV station and a mainstream media outlet, reported that investors lost home as the Bitcoin price crashed. But the same argument can be applied to the stock market, real estate and every other major market, yeah? Uh, the report claimed that investors put up their homes as collateral to receive loans and invest in Bitcoin. As the price of Bitcoin dropped, their homes were taken away along with their assets. So... I just want to quickly highlight, I think that's enough, or I don't need to go through it. But the key point is that, right, a major British media outlet basically want to sling, you know, want to scare people that, you know, people lost money in Bitcoin and also they lost their homes. It is, again, very scary, right? But again, this article, you know, is correct in pointing out that it doesn't only happen in crypto market, right? It happens everywhere as well, right? As any... If investors are not careful, right, they just invest everything that they have, of course, right, you can burn, right, get burnt. Now, the other thing is that really, right, uh, just the other two articles are really just to 
as a caution as well, right? Huobi has placed 32 digital assets on probation because of low trading volume, yeah? And these are the 32 coins, so right? you should actually look at this news. Um, and actually, right, if you have coins in this, you really need to, you know, um, liquidate your, your asset because these are really low trading volume. That really speaks to, you know, the potential is really low. So it is best to liquidate it, yeah, if you have. Um, cryptocurrency scams are thriving on Twitter eight months after it was working to eliminate them. The latest is, of course, they have actually been hacked into Target, which is a major um, you know, supermarket in the US, and they're able to use their marketing to actually say, you know, they are giving out a cryptocurrency, 5,000 units, and you need to, you know, log into a website and, you know, give your, um, you know, give them some Bitcoin to test out so that they can make, they can send you free Bitcoin. Now, please, 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 right? I just want to end this uh, video on a note of caution. So really, really, right, be careful. If something sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true, right? Never, never give away your cryptocurrency just like that to someone you don't know, yeah? If you want to give it as a gift, sure, you can, right? Give it to your friends or even give it to me as a donation, right? But yeah, please, as a joke, right? But don't, don't, don't give to anyone you don't know, yeah? Never, never trust this kind of scams. There are a lot of scams like this. But why it continue to happen is because it must have worked, yeah? So I think a lot of people will have lost their money through this way. So please, please, right? Please be careful and only invest the money you are willing to lose, yeah? Okay, so happy, uh, you know, holidays, everyone. And Merry Christmas because we are doing on the Eve. And, you know, have a great day wherever you are. And, you know, hope you like today's episode. And you feel free to please share it with other friends who are not in the know. And you know, leave a like, subscribe, comment, right? And feel free to share. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you.